Hey guys, I'm Mark. Now if your kitchen is anything like mine, then your spice cabinet is a little bit of a disaster, and that makes it really difficult to get in there and find the one thing you're looking for. So today I'm going to show you how I made this spice rack with multiple sliding drawers that makes it a lot easier to keep things organized, and you can actually fit a lot more stuff into the same amount of space that you had before. Let's check it out. As with most projects, the first step is cutting the material to the right size pieces. Since this is primarily a plywood project, that means I needed to start by breaking down a full-sized sheet. Craig Tools helped me out with this project, and I used their AccuCut Circular Saw Track System to make short work of the full-size plywood sheet. If you would like to get a full set of plans for this spice rack, they're ready and waiting for you over on buildsomething.com, which is Craig's huge online collection of step-by-step -step DIY plans. There's a link in the description to take you straight there. With 48 inch long sections cut from the plywood sheet, I used my table saw to get all the pieces to their final dimensions. Next, I had a pocket hole party. I find that it's much easier to drill all of the holes for the entire project in the same step. That way I'm not switching back and forth between assembly and drilling more holes. That being said, it might be difficult to picture just where the holes need to be in some of these parts until you start to assemble them. So if you have room for it, it might be wise to leave your pocket hole jig set up somewhere. In a later step, you'll notice that I missed an important set of holes and I had to go back and fix that. Assembly started with the main body of the cabinet, which, let's be honest, it's just a box. I first attached the side walls to the base using glue and screws, making sure that the holes were facing the inside. Once I flipped the box over and added the top, the space got a little confined and I had to use an adapter on my drill to drive the screws in. If I had oriented the holes to the outside, I could have avoided this inconvenience, but having them on the inside means I won't be able to see them once the drawers are in, and therefore I didn't have to fill any of the pocket holes later on. Putting in the back could potentially be a similar story. If the holes faced the inside, you would never see them. But in my case, this whole project is going to sit inside a cabinet and you won't ever see the back. So for the sake of easier construction, I let the holes face the back side. Moving on to the drawer assembly, I started by attaching the back to the top and bottom pieces. Once again, the holes are facing the back, which will never be seen. I used a second back piece to help hold the pieces in place to make assembly a little easier. To install the center divider, I used the shelf pieces as spacers to make sure it was sitting in the exact center. I also used those shelf pieces on the back side to draw lines to show me where the center would be. This made it much easier to line up the nail gun and launch in some brads. Just in case you were wondering, most brad nailers are not loud enough to wake a sleeping dog. He's been around for a few months now, but allow me to officially introduce you to Flint, our 9 month old Springer Spaniel. I cut a scrap piece of wood to the exact height that I wanted the smaller shelf space to be. Then I used that piece to mark the location of the shelf on the center divider. From the opposite side, I set the spacer down, then used it as a support to glue the shelf to the center divider in the exact position I needed it. Once again, I used brad nails between the pencil marks to hold the shelf in place while the glue dried. Then, I just repeated this process until I had three drawers with two shelves each. I keep calling these things drawers, and in my mind that just isn't quite right. Maybe sliders or just slides is more appropriate. Calling them drawers is easy though, because when installing the rails, the process is identical to putting drawer slides in a cabinet, just on a smaller scale. With the box standing on one side, I put a thin scrap piece down to space everything away from the wall a little bit. Then I set a spacer on top of that for the edge of the slide to reference off of. Then I used short screws to attach the rail to the box. After the first slide, I figured out it was easier to stop fighting gravity, so with the box sitting on its top, I attached the opposite slide. I put the drawer in place between the slides, then pulled them out of the box just far enough to expose the first hole. I ran in a screw on both sides, then pulled the drawer out far enough to reach the second set of holes and ran in two more screws. If everything is spaced correctly, these screws will be directly in line with the center divider in the drawer. Mounting the rest of the slides follows the exact same procedure. I attached the slides on the opposite end first, then needed a new spacer piece to get the middle slides in the exact center of the box. I ended up using MDF for the drawer faces because I kept running into voids in my cheap plywood while adding the beveled edge at the router table. A classy hardwood would also be a good optional extra, especially if you plan to let this sit out on your counter instead of buried inside a cabinet. I mounted the drawer faces by putting CA glue on the leading edges of the drawer pieces, then spraying accelerator on the back side of the face. There's just enough of a space between the drawers and the front of the box that I could set the face down on top and get them perfectly aligned before lifting the drawer up and letting the CA glue take hold. After a few seconds of hand clamping action, I gently lifted the drawer enough to get a real clamp on it, ensuring the face wouldn't shift its position. Then I pulled the drawer out of the box and ran in some screws to permanently lock it in place. These are the pocket holes I referenced earlier that I'd forgotten to drill out before starting the assembly. Make sure you don't forget these like I did.
I thought about drilling finger holes before mounting the faces to the drawers, but I decided I had a better chance of keeping perfect alignment from one face to the next if I drilled them after they were in position. I marked out the height, then used a Forstner bit to drill a one inch hole through the side and center faces simultaneously. My beefy drill press was only barely tall enough to do the job, so you might want to keep that in mind when you're deciding how to drill yours. I used a great big step bit to lightly chamfer the edges of the finger holes since none of my countersink bits were big enough. To get ready for paint, I removed all the slides and sanded all the corners by hand just to soften the sharp edges and make things a little nicer to handle when it's finished. I set up a rickety table in my yard made up of a garbage can, a roller stand, and an old door, then painted all the pieces. This raw plywood was pretty thirsty, so I ended up giving it three coats to get the job done. I made guide blocks out of a few small scraps, then used an awl to mark out the locations for small eye bolts. This way, I could get consistent placement on every shelf, and I only had to measure once to make the guides. I drilled tiny pilot holes, then spun in the eye bolts to make attachment points for some strips of elastic. Using a double modified Granny's slipping knot, I tied the elastic to both sides, making sure it was fairly taut in the process. These strips will keep the spice bottles from falling out. They don't have to be very strong because all the forces on these drawers are moving front to back. These are more of a precaution, just in case you have an overzealous chef in the kitchen who needs a tablespoon of coriander in a big hurry. I reinstalled the slide hardware onto the drawers and to the cabinet body, then slid all the drawers in place to check out the finished project. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this project useful. Now, I'm sure everybody's gonna have slightly different sized cabinets, and mine especially, they're weird old custom things from the 70s, so this plan probably isn't going to fit exactly into everybody else's. But if you do go to buildsomething.com and get the plans off of there, uh, it's pretty easy to scale it. You could make it bigger, smaller, you could even add more drawers if you needed more. So just keep that in mind, and that's really about it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.